Moving on to binomial times binomial now. What has to happen? Still the same thing. I need to take every term in the first one and multiply it by every term in the second one. So let's see. First times the first. I'm going to have x squared. First times the last. What's going to happen? 4 times x. I'll have plus 4x. Now I'm looking at the inside. 5 times x will give me 5x. And last, 5 times 4 will give me 20. But we can combine like terms in the middle there. I've got x squared, and I'm adding 9 factors of x, and adding 20 on the end. So we can visualize this with a picture, this uh, product right here of binomials. So what's going on? Over here, the length of this side is x plus 4. This chunk is worth x. This chunk is worth 4. Down below, we have this entire line has length x plus 5. x is coming from here. 5 is coming from there. If we multiply those together, we can see what area we're actually covering in that square or in that rectangle. So, Individually, each of these rectangles have their own areas. So the length of this rectangle is x, and the width is 4. So on the inside, this area is 4x. Length of this one is 5, width is 4, area is 20. Hopefully you're getting the picture. Width down here is 5, length is x. So 5x is the area of that one. Length x, length x, area of this square is x squared. So if we're trying to find the area of the overall rectangle here, length times width, what are we looking at? Length, x plus 5, times the width, x plus 4. And how do we get there? It's the sum of all of these little areas. So let's see. Sum of the little areas. What am I looking at? I've got x4, or 4 times x, 20, 5x, and x squared all together, adding up all of these areas. So if I put it in descending order and combine like terms, what are we looking at? Same product we just solved for. So algebraically, this is what we're doing. To picture it, finding the area of length times width. If I multiply that product together, what am I getting? It's the sum of all of these individual little pieces. So the sum of all the little pieces together gives us that product. So it's kind of interesting. I'll never make you draw these pictures, but I think it's helpful for some to visualize what's going on when we're multiplying those. So let's take a peek over here. And we want to multiply these two binomials. So again, first term, I get 4x squared. 4x times negative 2. It's going to give me negative 8x. The inner ones together will give me plus 3x. And then the last, 3 times negative 2 will give me negative 6. We always want to write in descending order and combine the like terms. So I've got negative 8x and a positive 3. So I'll have negative 5x all together and minus 6. So you'll notice, and you've probably done these before, that we go in the same order every single time when we're multiplying. We go first, and then the outer, and then the inner two, and then the last two. Okay, so the order really doesn't matter. We could even flip these around and have x minus 2 come first times 4x plus 3. We'll get the same thing. But generally, we stick to this acronym, this FOIL acronym for the order. And it goes the first two, then the first to the outer, then the inner two, and last. Okay. So the order doesn't matter, but if you stick to the same order every single time, you're less likely to make mistakes. So go ahead and FOIL, multiply out all of these products of binomials. See what you get. In the first one, first term will give me x squared, outer, 5x, inner, 
8x, and last, 40. But we want to combine like terms, so how many do I have in the middle? And write it in descending order, x squared, 13x plus 40. Done. Second one. First, x squared, outer, negative x, negative 6x, inner, positive 3x, and last, negative 18. Combining our like terms in the middle, I have negative 3x. That one's done. For part C, now I have coefficients other than 1 out on the front. So in all of these cases that we've seen in your tries, they've been 1s, but we've seen other ones. That'll be fine. So 5x times x, 5x squared, 5x times negative 4, minus 20, inner, plus 3x, last, minus 12. So we've got 5x squared, minus 17x, minus 12. And the very last one. So our first, 2 times 3, give me 6, x times x is x squared, outer, minus 2x, inner, minus 9x, and last, negative times a negative gives positive 3. We want to combine our like terms, write it in descending order. So I've got minus 11x plus 3. So if you stick to the same pattern every single time by foiling, you're less likely to make mistakes. Anything larger than a binomial still behaves the same when we're multiplying. Every single term of the first has to hit every single term of the second one, but they're just more time consuming. So we'll look at a few examples, but it's still the same process that's happening. So we want to multiply x squared plus 2x minus 3. And if we're going to classify that polynomial, what kind are we talking about here? This is a trinomial, has three terms. And what am I going to multiply it by? x squared plus 4, which is a binomial. And for that to happen, again, every single term of one of them has to touch every single term of the next one. So multiplication is commutative. The order does not matter. So I'm going to put x squared plus 4 first, and x squared plus 2x minus 3 second. If you're comfortable seeing it the other way, go ahead and write it the other way. It's not going to matter. And again, what has to happen? So the first term to each of these, then the second term to each of those, and we'll simplify. So I'm going to start with the first term and just go in order so I don't make any mistakes. x squared times x squared, looking at x to the fourth, same base with multiplication, we add the exponents. x squared times 2x. So I get 2x cubed. And x squared times negative 3, negative 3x squared. So we took care of the first term here times each of these. Now we'll take the second one to each of those. So 4 times 2x is 4x squared. Excuse me, 4 times x squared is 4x squared. 4 now times 2x. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. Got one factor of x. And 4 times negative 3 minus 12. So now we want to write these in descending order. To the fourth power comes first. How many x cubes do we have? Just two of them. How many x squareds now? I've got 4, taken away 3, I'll be left with 1. And I've got 8x and negative 12 on the back. Okay, so we take it individually. So, for you to try, take this last one and do the multiplication, see what you come up with. Personally, I like to see the smaller polynomial come first, so I'm going to change the order around. And if you kept it in the original way, you'll see we get the same answer in the end. Doesn't matter. But personally, I like to see the smaller one first. So I take x times the first term, 3x cubed, x times the second term, minus 2x squared, x times the last term, plus 4x. So we took care of all of the first, taking care of all of the second now. 
5 times 3 will give me 15. I've got two factors of x. 5 times negative 2, negative 10x. 5 times 4, plus 20. So we want to write in descending order. The largest thing I can see is 3x cubed. Took care of that one. How many factors of x squared am I going to have? Got 15 and I'm taking away 2. So I'll have 13 of those. How many factors of x? I've got negative 10, positive 4. So that'll give me negative 6x. And 20 doesn't have any buddies to combine with in the end. Well, that's okay. So even if you had it in this order, if you took this term times each of these, this term times each of those, third term times each, you still get the same thing in the end. It's just a matter of preference which one you want to write first. But again, every single term of the first has to hit every single term of the second.